Well, if she reassures him with romantic words and 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 attention, uh, you know, I mean, she could probably help him with his insecurity. Sure. Yeah. Amy Dickinson is going to give a short answer here because yeah, she was part uh, of it is cut off. <laughs> <laughs> what so, is the matter with you, man? Man, a lot. You can't put qualification or a timeline on someone else's discomfort. From what you report, your boyfriend is being respectful and honest about his struggle. Some people are unilaterally insecure about their beloved partner's yeah. sexual past. Well, talking about it is... You must forgive it. Talking about it is a, is a big first step. It's like group therapy. You know, being honest about it and saying, well, honestly, this was my past, and you were honest with me about your past, and I feel insecure about what you did Ooh. because uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry about that. I mean, this is a big step. You know, being truthful means a lot. I mean, look look at uh, uh, online dating. Uh, it all that only works <clears throat> according to how honest a person is on their profile, and whether or not other people read it. <laughs> Nobody reads it; doesn't mean anything. But I'm saying honesty is a big step in dating and relationships. So it's a, it's a foundation. It's pretty solid. Uh, Donald Trump promised he would deport 11 million undocumented Mexican immigrants. <sighs> Wait. If they are undocumented, they are unaccountable. How can he identify them? Why don't you go after the companies that are hiring all the undocumented immigrants? He also boasted he would make Mexico pay for a wall to keep the so-called lazy and criminal Mexicans out of the United States. Lazy? Yeah. A lot of those people... They're work, out in the field picking, baby. ...work long hours and work, work very hard. You should be going after the companies that hire the illegal immigrants. You know, not the, not the poor people trying to survive and, and feed their, their family and their kids. Go after the companies that hire the illegals because they're so greedy and cheap to pay a living American wage. Don't don't penalize the poor. Don't penalize the Mexicans. And don't be silly about getting thinking Mexico is going to build the big wall and then your name is going to be over the front door and ne neon lights. Yeah, forget it. It's not the Taj Mahal. Ain't going to happen. Most Mexicans are not lazy or criminal. Many work at more than one job. They provide a valuable service despite Trump's vicious slander. Ben Carson said that if Jews had guns, there would never have been a Holocaust. <laughs> Ridiculous! Jews had guns and used them during the Warsaw Uprising. The Jews were smashed! Carson said the Egyptian pyramids were for storing grain, not to bury the pharaohs. A pyramid shape with narrow corridors is stupidly wrong for storage of grain. Impractical, yeah. Carson also described how easy it would be to drive ISIS out of the Middle East. That is like when Dick Cheney proclaimed that war in Iraq would give us an easy victory. You know, it all see, it all um, reinforces my view of the United States of America today is just one big gigantic insane asylum. <laughs> Some other Republicans still scream about the attack on Benghazi. Republicans will not face facts or admit that Republicans refuse to pay for increased security at the U.S. compound in Benghazi. 
What is the matter with Americans who welcome this nonsense? The acceptance of these Republican candidates as frontrunners seems to prove that it pays to be ignorant. You know, watching the Donald Trump documentary, um, I hate to admit it, but you know, some of Donald Trump's hecklers are also ignorant too. Like, remember the, the what do you mean some of? You remember the guy who says, John, Mc what do you mean, John McCain is a war hero? hero. Yeah. And and Trump says, uh, war hero. He, 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 he wasn't a war hero. He got he got captured. I like people that weren't captured. Now that was silly too. Don't get me wrong. Trump's answer was kind of like. You know, uh, 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 like, hold on. You know, it's almost like he was discrediting John McCain and blaming him for getting captured by the enemy. But, you know, just because you're a POW, that doesn't make you a war hero. Yeah. That was stupid for him to say that to Trump. 90% of what comes out of his mouth is stupid. Yeah, and also. Um, yeah, and, and also many uh, of the uh, the people that heckle and or protest are, can be Looney Tunes also and ignorant. Uh, not everybody, you know, you're dealing with the average mainstream American here, you know, you just said, you've got people that vote for stupid reasons, like the the bartender, the female bartender, the young young bartender at Pub 46 that said, oh, I voted for John McCain and Sarah Palin because I think Sarah Palin is cute. What a stupid ass. What a, I mean, you're dealing with Joe Sixpacks and, you know, and, 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 and male and female, you know, just average Americans from all walks of life. Some of them are total imbeciles. Some of them are... We just said it in the last letter. Ignorant. They are ignoramuses. Ignoramus. Ignorance is uh, a, 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 a lack of knowledge. Being naive, right? Not having the knowledge. Not knowing. Some people are downright imbeciles. So. Like if you're living in a shack in Kentucky and your life is not getting better every year, your life is actually getting worse. Why would you vote for people that are not improving your life over the years? You know what I mean? And then saying to your pastor that, you know, like uh, um, an evangelical son said to me, oh, you're going to vote Democrat, but you're not looking at the overall picture. I says, what is the overall picture? I, I know what he was getting to. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was getting to the overall picture of uh, salvation and judgment and all that stuff. I says, listen, you palooka, there is no evidence. I, I, I know what the evangelical agenda is. I says, there's no evidence out of fertilized egg or an embryo that breathes like a fish is a human baby. I said, they always, it always gets around to um, homosexuality and abortion. If you, if you keep on talking to them and you keep on digging and you keep on debating uh -huh. with a born-again kook, freak, evangelical, it always ends up with those two subjects. Uh -huh. it, oh, it really does. And, and, and they... And they don't have a leg to stand on, they just have their their perception. Their cult huh? tradition. Yeah. Their cultist tradition. Cultist tradition, which is a perception of I, an uh, unproven, uh, well, an incorrect ideology, because it's not of the Bible. Though, like you told me, you taught me, the first uh, life begins when God gave the first breath to Adam. Mm -hmm. so the period. Bible says, period. That's correct. And hell is the grave. That's correct. The origins of the word hell. I was highly offended, disrespected, and suddenly saddened by Amy Dickinson's response to a query. Yeah. 
and I am confident I am representing the overall sentiment felt by my fellow Hindu community members as well. Depends what it was about. A simple Google search will show any internet user that the Nazi and Hindu swastikas are two symbols with entirely different meaning. That, that is very true. They are not swastikas. The, the shape of the swastika, the rotary, the identical rotary shape of the swastika is found in many cultures throughout the world and it does not represent Nazi or fascism or, or Nazi uh, form of government. The Hindu swastika is a symbol of suspiciousness and is extremely important and highly revered in our culture. The swastika was used by Hindus and other ancient cultures for thousands of years before it was adopted by the Nazis. That's very true. In the 1920s. Ancient symbol. The fact that the two symbols bear a slight resemblance to each other does not in any way condone Nazi beliefs. Diwali and the Hindu New York New Year, excuse me, took place two weeks ago. And the family reference in the piece had drawn those symbols on their front doorstep for religious purposes, just as all my friends and family did. And we have been living in the United States for 20 plus years. Well, the, the flag, uh, the, the, the symbol of Sicily, the island of Sicily where many of my relatives come from, my ancestry, is literally the head of Medusa uh. with legs, her legs forming a swastika shape, exactly like a swastika. It, it is an ancient symbol, I think it even I think it goes really, really far back. I don't know if it goes back as far as Babylon, but it goes way back. Dickinson is a highly well-read individual. And I am surprised she answered this question in such an uninformed manner. I would expect someone with such strong influence on readers to clarify the distinct difference between the two and to raise awareness about the acceptance and understanding of different cultures. Well, if you did the research, you viewers out there, uh, you Google it, you will see that it is a very ancient symbol. It comes in different forms, but its basic shape is the same. It's like a, like a rotor. It's like, like, like a never-ending circular uh, uh, motion. Um, actually, spherical, there are many spherical symbols in ancient uh, history. Um, well, the circle never go, never, it never ends. It goes on and on and on. Right. Yeah. That's true. That is true. Um, cyclical, cycles. Oh, yeah. You know. But anyway, uh, that's about it. That's it, really. Unless you have something on Trumpy or, uh, um... Nah, we can wait on these. Yeah, we, we did pretty good. It was a we'll very invigorating, uh, educational, uh, show for this week. Progressive discussions. So we'll see you next time. Have a, a safe and fun-filled weekend and, uh, have a good next week. And we'll see you, uh, next week following week, God willing, uh, on this countdown to Happy Festivus for the rest of us. A salute to Krampus, who is German, with a very long tongue, very long tongue, and I imagine very talented tongue. 
Uh, yours is okay, but not as nearly, nearly as long as Krampus is tough. Ain't as long as Gene, uh, what do you call it? Kiss either. Gene Simmons? Simmons, yeah. Oh. Jeepers. Yeah. Although I could lick peanut butter off my nose. Well, that's pretty long. Yeah. Now, uh, um, I am going to make uh, dry dry vodka martinis on Christmas Eve. I'm going to uh, <coughs> make it for myself and uh, William H. Morrow, our commercial voiceover for, uh, specialist, and uh, shake and not stir it, of course. And uh, uh, I learn something new all the time. I learned something about vermouth. Vermouth. Uh, is a wine that was originally used uh, medicinally because it has extracts of many herbs in it. You know, this the first vermouth was uh, presented, I think, in Turin, Italy. I'm telling you, you never stop learning, no matter how old you are. That's what I'm trying to get at. Every week that goes by, I learn new things. Mm -hmm. So. There, if somebody's walking around thinking that they're a, a know-it-all guru and they're on top of Mount Olympus and, uh, and that's it, forget it. Mm -hmm. it, it it's, all, it's all delusional because you really never stop learning. It's a closed mind. It's a closed mind. Closed mind. The, the, every time you think you know it all, you don't, you know, and uh, it, could be, it could be any field. The history of... Um, like I told them, um, well, I haven't told them uh, yet, but, um, you know, Helder Gondra of, um, oh, I'm sorry, Helder Gondra of Indian Clubs Portugal, and Zay Ricardo, and Zay Ricardo, who is a chess player like yourself, a chess enthusiast. Um, I told, uh, I'm going to tell uh, Hader, uh, Helder, uh, that uh, if you go to uh, the tourist area on the coast of Portugal, which I imagine is Lisbon, and, and being that you make, you're very artistic with wood, with wooden toys, wooden uh, uh, in exercise clubs and such, and calisthenics equipment, and all made out of wood. Um, a lot of beech wood there. Anyway, if you make chess sets, if you make hand-carved medieval chess sets out of wood, that is big tourist souvenir. Mm -hmm. That's a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Literally, because no matter where I've ever been internationally uh, at a resort, I saw lots of chess sets uh -huh. from that region. It just, you know, what can I say? It's a, it's a big... Uh, tourist gift uh, souvenir item so anyway we'll see you next time um, on progressive discussions um, believe it or not I have one last piece of my uh, sister Lisa's uh, sugar-free pumpkin pie ah! pumpkin pies and her sugar-free home-baked apple pie was outstanding outstanding no need for sugar in these pies it was outstanding. I tasted apple. The apples were crispy. They weren't mushy. I tasted the cinnamon. And uh, I tasted the, you know, the butter and, and, the, and, the, and the pie crust and everything. And there was enough sweetness that were in the apples. There was no need for the, any added sugar. So that's it. We'll see you next time. You know, there's really no need for this, but Americans are, they have this obsession with, with, uh, uh, with uh, sugar and, and, and uh, excessive amounts of uh, salt. There is no need for it. That's all they can taste. Oh, yeah, it drowns out the natural uh, flavors of the food you're eating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you go to, if you go to a Brazilian Rodizio barbecue restaurant, mm -hmm. I watch them. The only thing they sprinkle on their meat is uh, either sea salt or kosher salt. They don't, they don't, they don't pile on sauce and, and, and dry rub. But I personally like Memphis style barbecue with the dry rub. But they don't, they don't, they just put the salt on. And they, and they allow the wood 
from the uh, that they use to barbecue to flavor the meat. Anyway, that's another talk show. Bye bye.